right so again welcome to episode seven um if you listened to or watched episode six which is entitled i'm married to a narcissist um this you'll then you'll know what i'm talking about so this is um episode seven where i talk about how i deal with uh, my marriage um so before i get into it uh, this is something that I haven't done previously, but I'm going to start doing it going forward, um, whether this is in, ends up being the last season um, or whether there is a season three. I'm going to start doing this going forward. So I'm going to start asking you all to like this podcast and share this podcast. And then finally subscribe to this podcast so like share and subscribe or like subscribe share this podcast it is available on most podcast platforms and um, there are two that are still missing I'm having a hard time getting those two but it is what it is um, but it's available most everywhere else I am not on Apple and I'm not on uh, I'm not on iTunes and I'm not on um, Google podcast. I'm having a difficult time getting those two to come up. But everywhere else, including YouTube, if you want to see the podcast, um, you can find me there as well. Um, so for those who are watching, yes, I am in my bathrobe because I wanted to get this recorded before the noise began at my house. It is Sunday morning, Super Bowl Sunday, as a matter of fact, and I know that it's going to get noisy. So before that happens, I figured, let me go ahead and get this recorded. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, it, this may be a short one um, because there are really only three things that I utilize invest in to help me deal with all of this and with that I'll tell you those three things uh, my faith or prayer is one way therapy is another way and then creativity is the third way so um, I grew up in a Christian household practicing um, Christian beliefs, believing in the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and I still believe. So my faith is so important to me with how I deal with life in general, but especially in how I deal with difficult situations, difficult circumstances, difficult people. My faith and prayer is how I deal with those things. Um... So I pray a lot. I pray a lot. I pray throughout the day, not just in the morning when I get up, not just in the evening before I go to bed. I pray throughout the day. That is what gets me through uh, the day, but that's also what gets me through what I have to deal with um, in this marriage. I pray. Um I believe that even this difficult time is for a purpose and I know that that purpose is not just about me. So I, um, even though it's hard, I still um, do everything I can to make certain that I remain focused on this isn't just about me. This isn't even just about him um, and what he has to go through and endure, even being in the in, in the condition that he's in. Um, it's not just about us. This is about others, other wives, um, other caregivers, other marriages. It isn't just about me. It's not just about him. It's not just about us. It's about something bigger than us. So I hold on to that. I hold on to my faith and I know that it will work out in the end, whatever the end may be, it will work out because it's about something bigger than us. Prayer and faith. Um, there are scriptures that I hold on to, um, for I know the plans that I have for you. Um, that's one of the 
and actually let me pull those scriptures up because I, um, you would think I'd know them by heart because I pull on them so much, but um, I don't. I don't. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Um, that is one of the scriptures that I hold on to um, the most. Because I know, again, that this is all um, about something bigger than me. It's not just about me. Um, another part of my prayer, my faith, is my affirmations. I go through my affirmations. I used to do it on a daily basis. I got to get back to doing it on a daily basis. But my affirmations are simply the promises of God over my life. So I, I incorporate that into uh, my routine. And when I begin to forget about who I am, whose I am, what I'm capable of doing, I go back to those affirmations. I have them plastered on my wall behind me. Um, so whenever I come in, I know that I have to say those affirmations. Whenever I forget to say those affirmations and I'm in a down moment, I go back to those affirmations because they are the promises of God over my life. Um, so faith and prayer are really, really big. They go hand in hand, they're really, really big. And how I deal with um, this marriage, this illness, this narcissistic behavior, um, him as an individual, that's one of the ways that I get that I get through it. Uh, another way that I get through it is therapy. I am a wholehearted believer in therapy. Um, even as a coach, a life coach, that's what I do. When I'm not doing my nine to five, I'm a life coach. And this this whole podcast, quite honestly, is contradictory to uh, my life as a life coach. But I also believe that it is a part of my uh, purpose as a life coach, which is why I do it. Um, well, one of the reasons why I do it, the, the main reason why I do it is because I need to get all of this out and not hold it in. Um, but I also believe not only as a coach uh, or investing in a coach, but I also believe in investing in therapy. That is a form of self-care for me. Uh, so I go to therapy twice a month. As a matter of fact, I have an appointment coming up next week and I have to cancel it and I feel bad about it, but I have to cancel it, reschedule it for another day. Um, as a matter of fact, I may have to change therapist, which is going to be a tough one for me because my therapist is good um, in the sense that uh, she's very receptive and she asks all of the right questions me, and she talks me through the process. So she's good at what she does, uh, but I, I may have to switch just because I need to be with someone who will accept my insurance. So I've got to, there is no may have to, I've got to switch therapist. Um, I've already checked with her company, the company that she practices under and they don't accept my insurance. But therapy is another thing that helps me get through this marriage because I'm able to um, not just talk it through, not just get it out, not just regurgitate what's going on with me, um, but I'm able to get a response back. So it's a little like the podcast where I can share everything, um, but I'm getting responses back in real time. It's not even getting responses back in the comments and saying, you know, and reading those and, and feeling encouraged by those that come through that are positive comments, but I'm getting the response back in real time and I'm getting another way of thinking of things and I'm, you know, seeing how things can be different if I went a different route. Now, mind you, these are things that I know already because these are practices that I utilize with my own clients, um, but it's different when it's presented to you um, by someone on the outside that... Um, it makes you look at things differently, even though you know the answers, even though you've got every answer for the test and you're, you should ace the test. It's it's different when someone else is presenting those possibilities to you. Um, so therapy is huge. Therapy is huge for me. 
Um, we have great conversation. She, like I said, has wonderful solutions. Um, and I'm going to hate having to let her go, but I have to. So I've got to start the investigation for um, therapists that will take my insurance. And I don't know, I'll go through my insurance plan to find one. Um, the last therapist that I had was through my insurance plan, but I don't have that particular insurance anymore. I have a different one insur insurance now, so I've got to um, invest in the time, the, invest the time into looking for one that takes my insurance. But therapy is really very good. I, I am a huge advocate of getting a therapist, even in the moments where you don't feel like you need one. It's still good to have one on deck because you're going to have those moments where you do need one. Um, even going to the sessions when everything is fine will help keep you encouraged um, so that when you get to those not so fine moments, you um, have that little bit of energy from the last conversation that you had with, with your therapist. Uh, you can go pull back on something that they said to you um, until it's time for you to meet with them again. So again, therapy is, is, is huge for me. Um, I believe in therapy. Most, and this is a generalization, I have no facts outside of my own experiences. Uh, but most uh, households of color that I know of don't believe in therapy. Um, and most men of color believe in even less in therapy. So I try my best to encourage men in general. I have a hard time with therapy. But I try my best to encourage everyone that I encounter that may be in a situation and they have, they feel like they have no one to talk to or no one to um, pull from. Even if they are a client of mine, I still encourage my coaching clients to, to invest in a therapist if they don't have one. Um, because you just need that sounding board. Yes, I can give you the same advice, but I am not medically trained. So there are things that they can do that I cannot. There are bits and pieces of information that they have access to that I do not. Even though I do subscribe to a lot of the therapy um, materials, websites, uh, periodicals, there's still a different insight that a therapist has versus what a coach has. So um, I encourage everyone to get a therapist. Okay, so th that's that's one. That's two, rather. So prayer and faith is one. Um, and therapy is another way that I get through um, what I'm going through with my marriage. And uh, the last conversation that I had with her, um, we talked about what my next step should be, or what I thought they should be. And she encouraged that I really be sure it's what I want to do for one, but then that I, that I prepare for that. Um, another thing that she encouraged me to do is to stick with my creativity, which is the third way that I deal with uh, the stresses of this marriage, this relationship, uh, is my creativity. Now, one way that I express myself and I have in the past is through writing, but lately I've been drawn to art, uh, specifically um, specifically uh, painting. Um, I've done a little bit of scribble art, and but the painting is really what's getting me. Um, I've done some resin work, and I've got I bought resin yesterday uh, so that I can create some other stuff. But I also bought paint yesterday so that I can do um, a, a pour tonight um, or at some point during the day. I'll be watching the game, but I won't be watching the game. Um, so my creative side, which I used to be so involved in, um, I let fall to the wayside. And I decided to get back to my creative side and explore something that I've wanted to explore for the longest um, outside of school. Because when you're in school and it's an assignment, it's forced on you, it's something you have to do. You're invested, but 
not as much as you should be, um, if, if you get what I'm saying. So because it was an assignment or because it was work, I was invested in it, but not enough for me to say, hey, let me stick with this. Um, I used to draw and love drawing. I've got a folder with some of my drawings in it. I've got a pair of pants that I drew on um, that I absolutely love to this day. I have them hanging in my closet because I absolutely love these pants. Two pairs, as a matter of fact, I absolutely love these pants um, because it expressed my um, art ability early on. Uh, the, of course, this was my teenage years, not in, in uh, my grammar school years, but in my teenage years in high school, I, I drew on pants. Um, and for high school, I actually had a pair of jeans that I drew on. And then I had all of my friends uh, sign them. So, you know, have you have your... Um, eighth grade signature book I think you get it for high school as well but an eighth grade signature book and your friends leave you notes in those books I think we didn't get one in high school so I had my pants and I had my friends sign my pants um, that was so much fun that was so much fun but I haven't drawn anything in years and I'd never explored painting which is something I really wanted to do and I actually watch YouTube videos and the like uh, of paint pours because that's the one that intrigues me the most. I like abstract art um, and paint pours intrigue me the most because abstract can be anything, whatever your mind says. But in paint pours, you begin to see the complexities um, in the fluid and create so many crazy things and it's beautiful. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I'm going to get up and bring to the camera a couple of things that I've done. Uh, or it lets you see. Yeah, you can see it from here. So this here, this big one here, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. Uh, the camera isn't the best because I'm using my laptop camera instead of my webcam ca camera. But... Uh, that back wall is lined with some of my art pieces, paint pieces, and I've got some stuff that's laying down. And this is just me being abstract, me just exploring uh, paint. So uh, that's another way because it takes me out of my analytical mind and keeps me from thinking about the things that have the potential to stress me out, especially in this marriage, um, especially being a caregiver, uh, dealing with someone who to a degree refuses to do, I can't even say to a degree, but refuses to do the things that are necessary to ease not eliminate, but ease the ailments. So it's one of the things that I utilize and I'm enjoying it so much right now. Like I said, I went and bought paint yesterday, um, more acrylic paint, more brushes. Um, I've got to go out today and get some more containers for pores. Um, and I'm starting really cheap. Yesterday was the most money that I had spent on my paint supplies because I wasn't sure if it was going to bring me the level of satisfaction and relief that I had hoped that it would. So I started out really very cheap. I started out at Dollar Tree um, and Ross and I still do Ross for the canvases for now. Um, so I started out there because again I wasn't sure I was going to get the satisfaction and relief that I had hoped to and now that I figured out that it does bring me those things um, I went to Michael's yesterday and um, they had a, um, an art case that I wanted to get but it wasn't in the store so I'm gonna have to order it 
Um, but in the meantime, I bought more brushes that were like nine bucks. And there were 40 pieces in there total. Uh, I bought more acrylic paints, a 12 pack, which was inexpensive um, for 12. It was almost like a dollar for, actually less than a dollar for the pack, less than a dollar per paint for the pack. Um, then I also bought a larger container of white acrylic because I need, I should have bought a black as well because black and white are going to be your bases always. Um, they're going to be your bases. Well, I won't say always. Most times black and white are going to be your base paint or black or white are going to be your base paint. Um, and then with white, of course, you can mix it with other colors and create something else. And you can do that with black uh, if you've got a lighter color and you want to make it darker, um, depending on the color. But I bought a couple of things and I spent the most money that I spent on this art, you know, zhuzh of mine. And I'm, re I'm, I'm excited. I prepped my, my, my canvases last night so that they would be ready for me today. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. So those are three. And I, I said I did buy some resin. Um, and I'm going to do some resin. If not tonight, then sometime during the week. Because I do want to create a, another resin piece. I've created some stuff already. Uh, just to play with and see how I like it. And I like where you can go with it. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, those are three ways that I deal with this, this toxic relationship. Uh, faith and prayer, therapy, and creativity. Now, I will say this. He has, uh, since I recorded the previous, the last episode, episode six, um, he has apologized for some of his behavior and I appreciate the apology. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I appreciate it because he could have just not done it. But at the same time, when you're dealing with a narcissist, you have to be mindful that Sometimes the apology isn't genuine. Most times the apology isn't genuine. It's really just a way for them to manipulate you into getting your guard down, putting your guard down. So you're not as alert when the next <laughs> narcissistic attack happens. So I'm praying that it was a genuine apology it doesn't necessarily make me change my mind about what I've decided to do. But I do appreciate the effort. Um, the other part of this is there is yet another possible um, illness. We won't know yet until some... Oh, before this cuts me off. Uh, we won't know yet until we have some more testing done. But there's a possibility of more uh, medical complications or more illnesses, rather. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, that's how I get through all of this. Uh, prayer and faith, therapy and creativity. So I, next episode, which is episode eight, and I think I'm going to cut it at eight, will just be me doing an overall recap and then me talking about overall how I am doing. So it'll be an am I okay part two. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. I appreciate you. I hope that this has helped you in some way um, because that's really what this is all about in the end. Yes, it is about me being able to express myself. But like I said earlier, I know that this is bigger than me and that it is um, meant to help others. So I hope that it has helped you. And if not you, that you know of someone that it could assist. Um, and let me know somewhere in the comments, however you're listening to this, 
if you need additional resources because I can provide those for you as well. But I won't include them if it's not something that you're truly interested in. Um, so yeah, I'll see you next episode. Don't forget to um, like, subscribe, and share. Peace and blessings. Remember to walk in your purpose and know that I appreciate you so very much.